Victory Studios in downtown Little Rock. This is Capital View. And welcome to Capital View. I'm Roby Brock. Thanks for joining us today. A week of debates are in the books. We have new polling to release from Talk Business and Politics and Hendricks College as early voting begins Monday. And we begin with a look at some of those polling numbers. Let's start with the U.S. Senate race. Incumbent Republican Senator John Bozeman at 52%. He has a 20-point lead over his Democratic challenger, Natalie James. The Libertarian Kenneth Cates coming in at 3%, still 13% undecided, but a growing lead for Senator Bozeman there. In the Attorney General's race, Lieutenant, Gr Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin is broadening his lead over Democrat Jesse Gibson. Uh, Griffin with a 57% margin. He's the Republican nominee. Gibson, the Democrat, at 31%. That's a 26% point lead uh, for Griffin. 12% still undecided in that race. And in the governor's race, Republican nominee Sarah Huckabee Sanders at 51%, Democrat Chris Jones at 41%, so a 10-point lead. That's about right where that race was a month ago when we polled this. Libertarian Ricky Dale Harrington at 3%, 5%, still undecided. When we come back, we'll reveal numbers in the Issue 4 campaign to determine if recreational marijuana will become legal. And I'll be joined by Dr. Jay Barth and Robert Kuhn, our polling analysts, for insight on all of these results. And later, Democratic Representative Megan Godfrey and GOP strategist Bill Vickery with thoughts on the governor's debate from Friday. Stay with us. You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. And for analysis on the poll results we just revealed, we always turn to our trusted team of analysts. Robert Kuhn, managing partner at Impact Management Group. Dr. Jay Barth, professor emeritus of political science at Hendricks College. Good to have you both back with us. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank Robert. Um, all right, interesting poll numbers. We just revealed that Senator John Bozeman has a 52 to 32 percent lead over his uh, Democratic competitor, Natalie James. Still a little bit undecided in here, but we have seen John Bozeman's uh, lead grow. Why is that, Jay? Yeah, well, the last time we polled this, uh, just uh, uh, last month, uh, uh, Senator Bozeman was um, kind of have a tepid lead. Um, he's really solidified that lead quite expansively. He clearly has had a, a good, solid uh, television campaign, other forms of communication that really just remind folks of that he's a nice guy, that he's a good guy, that he's a, that he's a relatable person. And I think that's all he needed to kind of really uh, lock it in uh, in a very Republican state. Yeah, and his Democratic opponent hasn't really spent much money or had no. that much to do. It's, it's Dear John letters. They were working, aren't they, Robert? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we kind of came from a situation coming out of the summer where things were a little shaken up, I think, by the Dobbs decision. Uh, really, the story here for me is undecideds have started to come down. They've dropped from 21% in this race down to, I think, 13%. That's an 8% drop in undecideds. And John Bozeman his numbers are up about 8%. So he's clearly absorbing all of the undecideds at this point. He's the only one, like you said, running a real campaign um, with a real good message. So, I mean, it's he's winning handily with Republicans. He still has the advantage with independents. I mean, it's we can see where the trend line's heading on this. Yeah, so he is up substantial. I think he had a 14-point lead um, before um, and from our first poll a little over a month ago, and it's a 20-point lead now, so we've seen, we've seen it grow for sure. All right, in the Attorney General's race, this is another one that we're seeing some solidification behind Lieutenant Governor uh, Tim Griffin, the Republican nominee for Attorney General, 57% to Jesse Gibson's 31%. Uh, this race was about a 17-point lead, and it is now a 26-point lead. Mm -hmm. um, what is Tim Griffin doing and what is Jesse Gibson? He's kind of stayed where he was originally. Yeah, yeah. And again, I, mean, I think it's very similar to the first race, although, as we said uh, at the time of that first poll, you know, um, uh, Lieutenant Governor Griffin really does have an ability to kind of branch across the complex Republican Party. Uh, he's the one person who really, I think, has the has some reach uh, to more MAGA types, but also to more traditional or country club types. Um, he is going to be, he's the strongest candidate we polled here. I think he arguably will be the strongest candidate on the ticket for the Republicans for that reason. Uh, Jesse Gibson, obviously outfunded um, and has not been able to, to kind of break through in any way. Um, he is a, a, a solid candidate for sure, uh, but he just has not had the resources to really make that, uh, make it, make inroads. And uh, Griffin is, a, I think, in a very solid shape and really sets the stage, I think, for his longer term 
long-term ambitions because clearly this will not be the last race that uh, that that he runs, and I think he does. Uh, he is well positioned for the if future. You ask him; he's only interested in being Attorney General <laughs> right now. They all say that. So. Uh, what do you make of these numbers for Tim Griffin, um, and particularly where are we seeing an independence? As yeah, well? I mean, he's obviously grown a 17-point lead and 26-point lead. I think that's significant. I, I agree. I think he could, on a percentage basis, be the highest percentage Republican statewide on the ballot uh, when it comes down to, to it at the end. Um, really, the way that he's building that coalition of voters, I think, is what gets him to the number he's at. I mean, he's at 90 plus percent with Republicans, which is where you would expect him to be. But he's gone up from, uh, I think, a couple back in September, he was at 44 percent with independents. He's now at 55 percent with independents. And so, you know, that's the that's been the tried and true formula for the last couple of years for Republicans is get all of my folks and get more of the the folks in the middle, you put those together and you've got a real good number and that's kind of where Tim's ended up. So, I mean, I, I would expect his lead probably increases a little bit more uh, going in. I mean, there's still some undecideds yet to yet to decide and either they're not going to vote or they're going to probably break where the trend line's breaking. Yeah, there's not a libertarian candidate in that race. they got to go with one or the other or it's going to be an under um, counted you know, race there in terms of uh, the turnout there. So, Robert, I'll stay with you first on this question and we'll let Jay um, follow up on this. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, 51% percent Chris Jones 41 percent um, this race was about 10 or 11 points a month ago and it has not moved and so when you look at the John Bozeman number and you look at the Tim Griffin number and you see that movement why is this race do you think still right where it was a month ago I think there's probably a couple of reasons for that. Number one, I think you have to start with, you know, how many people are undecided in this race. There's not very many. I think we're somewhere around 5%. I think maybe we were at 7% back in September. So some of these other races had 20, 30% undecideds. This one's not moving, but it's not changing. I mean, Sarah Huckabee Sanders' number is not going down. Chris Jones's maybe went up with, you know, a point or two in the margin of error, but it's, it's not significant. It's not enough. There's not enough undecideds yet to change the outcome. And I mean, I don't expect the outcome will change. Um, I think probably there's some, there's clearly some difference in strategy uh, among the Sarah Huckabee Sanders campaign. Uh, you know, she had a very significant impact on the primary turnout, which was roughly 350,000 people in the Republican primary, uh, which dwarfed 2018, it dwarfed 2014. It was actually more Republican primary voters than even in the 20, uh, 2020 presidential election. And so I think that their strategy is different. It's different than what Tim Griffin's doing. I think uh, they've seen the enthusiasm on the R side and clearly they're focusing on that message. I think her messaging is more targeted to Republicans than necessarily trying to bring independents around. Um, there's a lot of smart people you know, on that campaign team, including the candidate herself. I think they've got a strategy and that's what they're sticking with. Yeah, Jay? Yeah, I think it's a strategy that's going to win the race uh, in all likelihood. Um, uh, but it's it's a strategy that's also deeply polarizing, and she is she is a very polarizing candidate. And this cam campaign is really a referendum on her as a result of that, because she is such a, a big name and uh, such a presence. Um, but but Chris Jones has run this incredibly uh, solid campaign. He is a deeply attractive candidate. He is contrasting himself with Sarah Huckabee Sanders without being mean. Um, and I think it's really working for him. Um, he's clearly outgunned in terms of, of funding, but he has, you know, kind of combined a grassroots campaign with a, with some social media that's solid, and then with some traditional TV. And I think he's made himself into a candidate who is, you know, obviously exceptionally stronger than the other Democrats who are on the ticket. Uh, she, her, just how, to show how polarizing she is, you know, we've seen Republican governors like Asa Hutchinson get decent chunks of Democratic voters. She's getting 2% of Democratic voters. I mean, there's just no ability to, to break through, and she continues to lose independence uh, by, by a few votes, a uh, few, few points as well. And so that's a real challenge for her. She is not going to get a big win, I don't think. I think she's going to get a solid win, but I don't think she's going to get a big win. And I think thinking about the future, she's not as probably as well positioned for the future as she might want to be. A 10% point, a 10% victory is a landslide still. I mean, but it won't be satisfactory, I think. Go ahead. Brian. Yeah, I, I would just say two things. One, I think Chris Jones will, will obviously overperform the other Democratic candidates, but I attribute a lot of that to the fact that he spent roughly $3 million, and they've probably spent a couple 
couple hundred thousand. Um, so, you know, that money is going to have an impact somewhere, right? I mean, we're going to see it in the numbers, and I think we do see it in the numbers. He's out being outspent by Sarah Huckabee Sanders, but he's well above any other Democrat on the spending side. I, I do think, you know, Asa Hutchinson clearly has built his coalition of votes um, by getting a big share of the Republicans, some Democrats, and more independents than not. I don't know. You'd have to go back and look at the num look at the numbers. Did he get that his first time out? I don't know if he did. I think he's evolved into that through governing and his pragmatic way of governing, but I don't know that he's been there since day one. And so it, it's possible that you would see that change over time. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I would say is that Chris Jones has spent that three million really well. I mean, I think it is a very attractive message with an attractive candidate, and I think you can spend three million dollars and not make make much headway, sure. or you can three, spend it in, in, in a good in a good solid well, he's way. He still maybe get beat in a landslide, though. So I mean, I'm just t telling you what the Republicans are going to say on yeah. that one, right, Robert? I think it's very possible. <laughs> right. I mean, he's not going to win. All right. Uh, issue four, uh, we're going to reveal these numbers for the first time. This is the recreational marijuana amendment. Um, there has been a lot of movement on this one. We are looking at it now, and it's 50.5% say they are for issue four, the recreational marijuana proposal. 43% against that number has come up from 29%, still 6.5% undecided. And I would suggest that uh, there have been some numbers peeled off of the supporters of this amendment, too. It was at 57, I think, maybe uh, a month ago when 59. we did this. So 59. All right, uh, Jay first, what, yeah. uh, what, does this message, does this issue pass? Um, probably, um, but uh, you know, I think it's in a different spot than it was the last time we polled it. When we polled it before, uh, the state Supreme Court had not yet uh, affirmed that the votes on it would be counted, and so it was still a little more abstract. Uh, now it's very real. We've seen, we, we saw that, that folks, the cam campaigns delayed their spending until they knew it was actually going to matter, and so they have spent a lot of money. I do think that you know, on most ballot measures, at the end of the day, it's easier to vote no than yes if you have any doubts at all, and I think that's that's clearly what the anti folks are doing is just raising some doubts. The pro side has run a fairly consistent campaign. I don't think it has been emotionally resonant, and I don't think it's really broken through in any real yeah. clear way. All right, you got about uh, 30 seconds left here, Robert. Well, I would say the trend line doesn't look good. I mean, support is down 8%, opposition's up 14%. Democrats aren't moving, but Republicans have moved big. I think we had Republicans almost evenly split the last time. They're opposed at 60% now. Independents are turning the wrong way. I think today, if you, if you had a vote today, I think it passes. I think the question is what money is spent on the other side of this leading into Election Day and early vote. All right. Come Robert Kuhn, Dr. Jay Barr, thank you both for your analysis. Always good to have you with us. You can catch all of these poll results and more analysis on our website at talkbusiness.net. We are back with more right after this.